Uh, what's going on people? We are Tottenham TV, finished 1-1 here at Craven Cottage. Spurs have lost on penalties. Davinson Sanchez missing the, basically the all important penalty to knock us out. But we'll get into all the penalties in a second. I mean, a host of changes today. Yeah. I thought first half we were terrible. Correct. We really were absolutely tragic today. I mean, Davinson Sanchez for that goal got turned inside out. Oli Skip was um, just terrible pretty much throughout. It was just a really poor showing in that first half. I just think he was he made too many changes. I didn't see the need for nine changes, to be honest. And I think we really struggled badly with our build-up play um, throughout the whole first half. We weren't able to keep possession whatsoever. I thought we missed Basuma so much with his ability to get on the ball, be press-resistant, and like, drive through that centre. And I felt like Hoybier, Skip, Lo Celso were just absolutely missing. They were bullied by the Fulham um, uh, midfield. I didn't even think Fulham were that creative in the first half. They got a bit of luck with the goal, but they earned that luck because Tom Kearney absolutely turned Sanchez inside out. As you say, it was a horrific bit of defending. The goal was tragic and we failed to create anything of note in that, in that uh, first half. And Fulham are a good defensive side. We've seen that since they've come into the Premier League under Mark Silva. They're very well organised and you're going to have to be very good to break them down. And unfortunately, we weren't that today. And I, before the game, I was worried about a potential for either Celso, Skip, and Hoybier, just because I don't. I think off the ball, they might be okay, but on the ball, I don't. Have, I don't have the quality to break that Fulham midfield and have that build-up play. And you put in Sanchez on top of that, who I thought his passing was horrific throughout the game. It led to a, a lot of problems where we weren't able to get the players out wide involved. Lo Celso wasn't able to get into any sort of space whatsoever. Hooked at half time, Lo Celso. Hooked at half time. Um, and I, we just looked very stodgy, disjointed. And I just I don't understand why you have to make so many changes. I, I understand you have to make changes, but why nine? Nine is a bit much. Yeah. And I think it cost us. Yeah, it most definitely did. And when you're looking at the first half and looking at any performers to stand out, you got Van de Ven, who I thought was absolutely brilliant, even though, you know, unfortunate own goal for him. Yeah, for I thought, game was brilliant. I thought, yeah, I thought Van de Ven was head and shoulders our best player today. Um, he saved us so many times with crunching tackles. Um, aggressive challenges and I thought he was really good stepping out into midfield as well at times um, and I thought Manuel Solomon as well was getting on the ball and, and trying to cause them problems he was the only one like trying to have a go at Fulham really yeah I mean I, I wasn't impressed with him either to be honest I, look he had some nice dribbles a couple. better than you can say about anyone else yeah that look, look Paris has laid on a really good assist but again we we kind of got a bit lucky because Tete uh, went off with a boot. Uh, his boot was off his foot, so he had to go down the tunnel to change his boot. And we How ridiculous was that? Like, we, well, I don't have one on the side. And we like, took ridiculous. advantage of it because Perisic picks up the ball on the left hand side, whips in the cross, and we end up getting goal from it. And that was a little bit of luck we needed. But I, what, what I will say is, we made this, we did make changes uh, for our second half, and we brought Sar on, we brought Son on, Madison on, um, and we and Kulusevski, and we looked so much better when those subs came on. We really did. We did. Uh, we I did. Thought, we looked, we started look, to control it a bit. Look, we did look a lot better. We did start to control it. We still didn't create anywhere near enough. It was too any, little, too late. And any clear cut opportunities. I mean, a couple of times Madison was getting on the ball, over hit passes. I mean, there was one moment Madison did all the hard work, didn't he? Took it around about two or three players and then it was just a heavy pass. And that was kind of like the story of that second half when those players came on, because there were good moments in there. We were putting on pressure, but when, it, when push came to shove, I mean, the final ball wasn't really there. And we, look, we were throwing caution to the wind and we were giving away chances to Fulham as well. And look, that, this is what we're talking about when we're saying that um, you need strong, fast defenders in the system, because when you're doing what we did in the second half, which was starting to control the game and push players forward and create openings, which I felt we did in the last 20 minutes, but what happened was, you're left with Davis and Sanchez and Emerson and Van der Ven at the back, and they just kept getting opened up because Davis doesn't have the recovery pace from Ugogi. Sanchez doesn't have that ability to, to build up the play from the back. So when you're asking him to do that, when, you, when you've got Fulham pressing him, he just wasn't able to. He wasn't able to find the passes. And we needed good quality in those situations to break through the Fulham press. And, it, and, we, and that's where we were lacking. I did feel like we had good control in that last 20 minutes. And if that game got on a bit longer, maybe we would have won it. And if we would have made the turn changes earlier. If I was Ange, I'm not gonna lie, at half time, I make, I make a host of changes, I'm sorry. That first half was nowhere near good enough. Yeah. He, made, he actually changed it to 4 4 2. We did get back in the game, although I still felt like we lacked a bit of control at 4 4 2, even with Scarlett and Rishi on. Rishi obviously got the goal, nice finish to be fair, but as you say, got a bit of luck with it. 
Um, but I thought we only regained proper control once we brought Madison on let's, and we had that midfield free. And we looked okay. But, but, let's, but let's talk about that cha that change at half time. Let's also get to it. Dane Scarlett comes on. Everyone was really surprised. Yeah. And look, I don't think he was absolutely amazing, Dane Scarlett, but he did more than Richarlison did was not, in that first half. And I thought there were some nice touches in there from him, some nice runs in behind that we didn't find him. Um, and there was one moment where he did that nice turn. But um, I, I, I wasn't quite impressed with Dane today. I thought it was all right. Look, I'm not, look for a 19 year old to have like 45 minutes in, a, in an important game like this, I thought he quitted himself well. I would say he struggled uh, because I don't think he was able to get an ace all goal scoring positions, wasn't able to get really any shots off. Whenever he was asked to be in a physical battle with one of their defenders, he kind of failed it. But there were another, as you say, a couple of nice times in the Bulls visit him, he was able to do a nice layoff and actually find a player, whereas the Charleston's layoffs are usually, you know, out of sorts. He did do that nice moment, I think, it lay, and he got off the pass as well, nice dubs on the defender got a pass off and I think we earned a free kick on the edge of the box because of it so there were a couple of nice moments but I, I think at the end of the day he, uh, he struggled um, to be honest to really make a proper impact uh, but look you could probably say he did more than Rishi although Rishi scored so you can't, I guess you he can't did say score that. but apart from that moment he was yeah, pretty yeah. horrific pretty much the whole you know what I mean the whole yeah. game he was pretty poor I just think overall it but, was a but it's just a testament today it's a testament today of our squad depth at the end of the day that's what it is look I love Ange I think Ange has done amazing I'm not going to criticise I'm not going to obviously go over, sorry I'm not going to go overboard my criticism because I think he's got a lot of issues to deal with and it's not his fault that the players coming in are, are, are not up to scratch at the moment but he didn't have to make that many changes and I think him making nine changes uh, ultimately led to a performance that we saw. It led to a lot of problems in the system which we didn't have solutions for on the pitch unfortunately like with our build up play, our passing was nowhere near crisp enough. Hoybear's value probably probably reduced about 10 million after that performance because it's absolutely horrific. Um, and and Forster, I don't understand why he, I also thought Forster today, struggled to be honest. I mean he made some good saves, don't, I'm not saying he didn't, but I thought he, he really struggled with his passing out the back. I think oh, where he the struggled times. is the bloody penalties. And the penalties, oh, exactly. God. Every, he all five he went the wrong way, all five. And not only did he go the wrong way, he moved so early and just made it easy for the Fulham players to go the other way. It was like moving in slow motion early and that was, um, that was really costly. Why, why is Davinson Sanchez yeah. stepping up for a penalty? I, I don't think, understand, yeah, like, you have, look, he, credit him for stepping up, fair enough, he put his hat in the ring, but you've got other players there, Hoybier. Hoybier's taken penalties in shootouts and he's done good jobs, so I don't understand, like, I've seen him take a good penalty, I don't understand why he's not in the five, to be honest, that's a real frustration. Sanchez would be the last player on that pitch, I, I would probably rather Fraser Force to take one than, than down to Sanchez, to be honest. Can see you, mate. Um, so that's a frustration that he stepped up. I don't know why he was, and obviously, ultimately, no surprise, he was the one who, who, who missed the penalty. Uh, it's just look. It's just, yeah. At the end of the day, it's just a really frustrating day. We're out of the cup. Uh, Again, that's another a trophy, trophy gone. Now yeah. we really are at one game a week for the rest of the it's season. Just, with no Carling Cup, Carabao put, Cup. It's just put and a downer on. on look, what was a really good start. Look, I think like I'm not gonna use this game to judge Ange and to judge where we're at at the moment. It's mm. a bad day at the office with a lot of the fringe players playing today. And for me, it just shows like where our squad is at at the moment because when we're playing our first team, we're looking good. The first three games we've looked good this season. As soon as he's asked to change. It. We had made a lot of changes today and it looked completely disjointed and pretty much it looked like the, the football that we were throwing up most of last season. Yeah, and I thought we looked good once we had our first team players on the pitch today, our first forward line players. We had control, we were able to play through the lines a bit more effectively and it's no surprise that it, it, was, it was a complete switch up really from what we saw in the first uh, 70 minutes or but so. What it, what it's just a shame that he made so many changes, he gave himself too much to do. You know, you know what happened. it is though, that I think like... If we make just like one or two changes within our first team and you've got that structure there, I think we can play. Nice, but when yeah. you just make too many changes... Like why is Romero just coming way out? Too, yeah. I, I don't understand why Romero's coming out. I, Hoibier and Skip together were just really badly struggled to do any sort of creative passing in that middle, any sort of like progressive passing in that middle. I would have started at least one of Sara Basuma. And the front three... Look, they struggled to get in the game, but I would say it's, I would say the fun three struggled more because of our midfield than themselves. But they also didn't do enough to really impact the game. I felt the front three um, were given any opportunities, but they, they had it really tough because they kept they kept literally picking the ball up on the halfway line, and they're asked to turn. And they have like two or three players on them. Whereas you know during the first half, of the, during the first three games, you have Son and Kulusevski picking up the ball really high and wide, and then all of a sudden you're asking them to run at their defenders in one-on-one -on -one situations, and that's more their forte. You put. Perisic or Solomon in those situations in the first few games I think they better do a lot better but today if you put Son and Kulisevsky 
in, in that first half, I think they struggle as badly as Perisic and Solomon, to be honest. I'm not going to blame them. I just think he made too many changes to, to the... And the it looked like middle. it. We played like it. We played like a disjointed team today for the majority of it. And look, we're out of the cup. And that's the most frustrating thing. We, look, we really wanted the trophy. We, the trophies were really important to us, especially given the time period that it's taken us to not win a trophy. And to go out in the second round is really frustrating. I really wanted him to take it a bit more seriously, this cup competition. And at the end of the day, you've got to say he got the selections wrong. He made too many changes. Yeah. So as I was saying, we're out of the cup. It's a very frustrating evening here at Craven Cottage. Uh, we move on to Burnley away this weekend where, you know, the, the first team will be out there. But what makes me worry is that if we get any sort of injuries and we have to rely on these players, um, then we're going to be found wanting more times than not, to be honest. And we need to back Ange or we need a proper squad here. Uh, otherwise, if we, you know, we can't come to these cup games and play this kind of team because yeah. you see what happens. So it shows how important the last few days of the window are. But I tell you what, the fans today, the yeah. fans today, once again, were in full voice from start to finish, even after the penalties when we got knocked out, clapping the players off. I thought um, an absolutely unbelievable showing from the Tottenham faithful once again. But look, we're out of the cup. We'll see you all very soon. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on Spurs. Spurs.